meeting is being recorded. Hi everyone, welcome to Black Woman's Hour 2022. It's a new Woo! year. I should have got like hats and uh, stuff to blow. I mean stuff like, you know, you know what I mean by stuff to blow. I meant those, I'm gonna shut up. How's everyone's new year? How's everyone's Christmas and new year gone? I, uh, ugh, lay, leave me alone. I can't. I meant, you know, those things you blow and then they come out and they make a squeaky noise. That's what I meant. You got the horn. Any oh, <laughs> Starting off, lowering the tone. This is setting the scene for 2022. Elaine, how was your Christmas? How was your New Year? How was everything? The Christmas and New Year's, it was quiet, um, but it was good. I've eaten well, 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 well. And I've had a new resolution to go to the gym and so far I've not gone. Oh, we need to get onto resolutions in a minute. Uh, Louise, how was your Christmas and New Year? No, it's very nice, actually. I, um, I haven't seen my older brother for three years, and my sister-in-law hadn't seen them for three years. So this was the first time that I'd seen them in a while. So that was really nice. It was just nice to see everybody, you know? It was just nice to see everybody. New uh-huh. Year's was very quiet. Um, I, my friend gave me a foot spa, so I used it for the first time on New Year's Eve. And yeah, just, just chilled, you know? Sorry? I saw you on Twitter. I saw you on Twitter. Why is your foot spa? What's it called? Barbara? Yeah, Barbara or Bob spa. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she's very good. She's, you know, like my foot was killed because I actually went for a run that day. My foot was actually killing me and I just put my foot in it for an hour and it was, it was gone. So yeah, it's very nice. Had my mint, my cherry tea. And I was just like, yeah, man. Do you know what I used the other day? I used one of those peeling things, those peeling feet masks. And um, okay. you see me doing this at the moment. I'm peeling skin off my feet. It's so nice. Sexy. It's so sexy. Nice. Um, uh, <laughs> why didn't you see your family, your brother, your elder brother and stuff? Was it COVID? It was COVID. And then, I don't know, like, he hadn't been to, he was saying, actually, that he, because normally he comes to London or we go up there. But it just didn't happen. It, it just didn't happen. And also, what we do is, like, every two years, they alternate. So, like, they'll go to my sister-in-law's parents house and stuff and you know last year we would have all been together but obviously that didn't happen so they decided to come to us this year and stuff so so yeah but I mean it was just nice to see everyone it's it nice to see everyone and just to see yeah. you know a bit reassuring that everyone is well and that, a lot so. of people are posting pictures of relatives they haven't seen for about a year this yeah year. I think if Boris Johnson had banned Christmas this year, they were the guy forked his ass. Um, had, had enough. Aisha, Christmas, New Year, how was it? I saw oh, some yeah, no, good. Um, sorry, I saw photos oh. from you as well. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah, it was nice. I spent Christmas away and then spent New Year's Eve with my family, and that was absolutely lovely. Um, my cousin was over from the States with her kids and we spent it with my grandparents and my aunt and uncle, my dad and my stepmom. It was lovely. Nice little countdown, all very cosy. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready for 2022, but I don't know if anyone is. Did anyone go into it? Elaine's mentioned one, right, we're going to talk New Year's resolutions. I don't know. It's something that I stopped doing over the past couple of years, but this year I decided I was going to do them again. Um, my, what's yours, Elaine? Elaine's going to the gym. That's one of mine. Um, reading more. Mine's health and fitness, like overall. Like we are getting to that age now. I've seen quite a few of people around our age, not to worry, just dropping dead. That's scaring mm. the hell out of me. Like people are, stuck. we're getting to the age where you're like, what the, people are dying. And there's been a lot of people dying during the pandemic, during lockdown and stuff because of unhealthy habits. Mm. And uh, the, there's been, um, I can't remember what I was saying. Sorry, yeah. I, just got, I just got a message and I was just distracted for a second. Um, yeah, so no, seriously, like there's been a massive increase of people just dying, just like that. And I was gonna say, particularly like amongst black men, like they, they seem to think that they're invincible. And when I'm thinking even from, if I take it outside my circle um, and we're looking at, the celebrities who died, you know, when they did the countdown of all the people you lost, that went on for ages this year. Yeah, but yeah. when you're thinking of all these, I never saw that. Where was that? And they did it on the news at about six o'clock in the morning that like they were going through all of the round up of all the people that we'd lost and in the different spheres of life. And 
when I'm thinking that for me, the people that I grew up um, following, like all of the rappers and the actors, like my, even even if it was a drug overdose or whatever, they were still at their prime. And hip hop lost a lot of people last year. Yeah, that hip hop lifestyle though, that hardcore drinking, that smoking weed, that whatever, that's not gonna lead to a long life really, is it? So I think that whole culture, because I've noticed how many of them are going in their 50s. Mm. It's freaking the hell mm. out of me. It is scaring me. So I wanted to do like, not even so much to gym, like health and fitness overall. Do you know what I mean? Like I really keep saying I'm gonna eat less meat and stuff and I've, you know, tried it, but I'm actually genuinely, because it's like, well, when do you do it? I think this is the age to start thinking about stuff like that. That's one of my resolutions as well. Just like as an overall thing. Do you know what I mean? Like I know, switching out rice for cauliflower rice and all that kind of stuff. Um, what other resolutions have you got, Elaine? Um, uh, reading more, um, deactivating, the, uh, sorry, not ordering takeaways. So it's one day at a time because that, that was my only pleasure last year. Um, and it's really sad when they're like, hello again. <laughs> and you think, you think you're trying to hoodwink it because they've got different deals on, on the same takeaways on the same app, on the different apps. And it's the same delivery people. So you know what? I'm not going to see them. So if I just take it like, for the first week of January, I won't order any takeaways. I haven't done anything so far. And I'll see what happens next week. So, yeah. Well, I have. I've done them all January so far. But I'm going to cook today. <laughs> We're only on day three. I am going to cook today, but I don't want to do any more. I'm just thinking, shall I cancel Deliveroo or not? I like, if I'm, I'm a member, so I pay a monthly fee. But then yeah. I'm thinking to myself, what if I cancel it and I really, really need it? I've also got shares in them as well. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But there are other brands available. But yes. Yes. Eating, <laughs> eating better is definitely one. Definitely, definitely one for me. Um, Louise, have you got any? Okay. So I start my new job as of tomorrow. So, you know, I just want to be really focused on that and just do really well on it. Um, the other thing as well is I want to glow up this year. So, you know, just experiment with myself, experiment with the way that I look and everything and just, just, you know, just glow up. And then the third thing, I mean, I, I, I carried on training, you know, through the pandemic and everything like that, but you know, like I stopped walking as much. So I want to step up my walk, literally step up my walking again and stuff. So, so far, I mean, I, I walked five miles the other day and then I walked five miles, four and a bit miles the other day. So after this, I'm going to walk. So I've walked. Let me have a look today. I think I've done 1.7 miles today. So I'm going to try and walk another 3.3 after this. Just trying to talking to me about that. I didn't realize we had this health thing on our phones. How does it know how many steps I'm doing? I never told it anything. It's in your uh, pocket. Wait, is it mod monitors your movement? And how does it know how much I've slept? Is it the only time that I'm off the phone is when I sleep? Is oh, it the other I just like, how do you know all these things? I didn't even know that app, that thing was on there. I just looked at it and I feel spied on by my phone. It has no right to record these things without my permission. We should do yeah. that goodness, our fitness challenge. Louise, if I can do five miles in one week, I'll be really happy. But yeah, we could. I'm sure, no, but the thing is, sometimes, I mean, with walking, and this is what I was saying to my friend the other day, that sometimes, you know, you walk a lot more than you you realise. But what we, no, well, what I've been doing, anyway, and I'll just... <laughs> I really don't, like, Louise. <laughs> no, you say, you say that, you say that. I, I mean, do actually I, at work. I do about 20,000, 20 to 30,000 steps a day at work. Yeah, but it doesn't work. help. I'm still a fat bastard. Oh, come on, don't be so harsh on yourself. Take I mean, what, one, one thing that I do is, is called <laughs> racial pace. So um, I do that every month. So this, I mean, and then I clocked up all of the miles. So like last year, I did like 5,972. So I'm going to get um, I'm going to get a medal. So that helps with the walking. But what I've also downloaded is this thing called my, my, my fitness. So it shows you, it just shows you how many steps. If you set it to walking, it tells you how many steps. And honestly, like if you walk to your neighborhood, you walk around to the shops and stuff like that, you probably already clocked up a mile without even realizing do it. I those things though, Louise. That's no. the point. I don't. I don't. No, I drive everywhere. 
and I've just been oh. able to get my groceries delivered back to me. I do jack, jack squat now. Okay. First time since the pandemic, but I am going to start. Do you know what? I'm really interested in that couch to 5K thing. Because yes, even younger, everybody I know who's done that can do it. And I don't know anyone who's failed on it. But even when I was younger and I was like a semi-professional athlete, I was like a sprinter. I've never been able to run distances ever. And I would like to be able to do that. So I might do that. Now, I'm not committing to that. So don't fucking write in. Don't tweet me. Don't ask me anything. Mm -hmm. At this moment on 3rd of January, I would like to. Okay? Okay, I'll go. Oh, sorry, go on. Go on. Sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, if you do it, it's really nice if you can to do it with somebody else, because I'm telling you. No, I don't like people near me. I don't. I know, but I hate people. Yeah. Like, I don't like exercising in front of people either. People, but... they get a gym buddy. It's the worst thing. Like, when I'm in the gym, it's earphones in. I don't want to hear you. Don't speak to me. I know, but I have to get when to the gym. to me to correct that other person doing stuff, it's simply go away. Do not speak to me in the gym, because I'm so in another world. It's like, do not speak to me under any circumstances. So I think, yeah, with the right, I might do it. You know what, put it this way. I mean, I couldn't run like five, six years ago, I couldn't run. I mean, and I've got arthritis, I've got rheumatoid arthritis and stuff. And when you have a flare up, it's just the worst thing in the world. But it's like, you know, if, I, I mean, I've been, I've been able to sort of like, I don't want to say reverse it, but like, you know, I think moving has really, really helped me. But last year, I was able to run like seven miles. You know, I, I, I did a seven mile, I raised money and I'm going to do it again this year, but I can tell you about ne that nearer the time. But I raised money. So if, I don't know, like if, if I can do it, and this is someone who's got arthritis at one point was so fat that I was a shot putter. Do you know what I mean? Like, not professionally, but that's what people used to say to me. Or, like, you know, I've rolled down hills and stuff like that, and people want to, you know, run away in case I hit them. So, like, if, if I can do it, like, you know, any of you lot can do it, any of you can. Sorry, can we just, just take a moment to apologise to all shot putters out there? <laughs> this is Anderson, Fatima Whitbread. I'm so sorry if you're watching. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, at my fitness, no, but that's I was heavy though. I was very heavy. <laughs> at my fittest, I did tough mother. At the moment, now I can't imagine um, running for a bus. That's the level of it. Like if you saw the bus there, like where you know in back in the day you'd be able to get it. Now I just see like go. No, it's all right. I was yeah. so into the gym, and even now when I look back, mm. until obviously I had personal things going on in 2018, I lost my daughter, and after all of that nonsense was over, I stopped going to the gym. But I used to live in the gym. Mm -hmm. And now I even look at photos even of like the beginning of 2019 and stuff. Like I really have lost a lot of fitness. And I just want to get that back. Because I really do when, you know, the gym when, when I get into it. I really do. Aisha, what other resolutions have you got? I don't actually, I'm a bit like you, Amber. I don't make resolutions. I've always been of that kind of, oh, well, you can make them any day of the year. If you're going to do something, you're going to do it. Why do you need a new year? However... There was a couple of things that I thought I'd take advantage of the new year. Back in the sea, I need to get back in the sea. Um, I haven't, so I'm gonna try this week. I miss it, even though there's the whole sewage thing. I miss it, it was it was invigorating, it made oh, me feel okay. good. And it made me feel like, I don't know, it made me feel quite invincible, because I think that often it's quite easy to feel like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. And you know, it's difficult to feel like that if you swim in a six degree sea for four, half an hour that morning, you feel, you know, like you can actually do stuff. I need to lose some weight for my birthday. Sorry, I know we're not supposed to talk about these things. I'm sorry, but I'm getting and... sick and tired of that, by the way. Like every well, time somebody says on Twitter, I would like to lose weight or get healthy. You don't need to. Why you actually, mind your own business. Not yeah. everybody wants to be fat. I'm sorry. I don't it's like- not even that. I don't even like being heavier. It, it fucks with my back. It's annoying. It's, you know, I can't move as quickly. I'm worried that if someone would want to snatch up my child or something, I couldn't run over and catch her. There's loads of things I worry about. I'm really getting sick of this attitude online. If you I say you're allowed you're allowed to. And stuff, you you're not to having fine. a go at you. Learn yeah. to love yourself. Who said I didn't love myself? I just said, I don't want to be frigging fat. I'd like to wear half the clothes in my bloody wardrobe that I can't wear anymore. I'd like to be able to go into the shops and just buy whatever I wanted as I used to be able to. Like, do you know what I mean? Like you could go to any shop and buy anything. 
And I can't do that at the moment. So no, I don't want to be fat and don't tweet me. I don't care. I think, I think so. That. So I mean, I'm, I'm with Aisha, what, you know, like, I, I, I think people should be the way that they want to be and stuff. But I know that for myself, I, I know I have to be careful because otherwise I know I'm going to come back to the problems that I had, like, you know, six or seven years ago. And I can't really afford to not be walking. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, for me, extra weight means I'm going to have more problems than my arthritis. I mean, I've seen it with some, I, I won't go into details and stuff, but I've seen it with some people in my clinic and, you know, they were all told that they had to, because it creates a lot of issues with the joint. So for me, I mean, I think that's why I just have to try to keep moving. Do you know what I mean? But I agree with Aisha. I mean, I think people just, if they want to, if they want to be bigger, if, if they are bigger and they've embraced who they are, fair play to them and stuff like that. But I mean, I think, you know, like what you're saying is valid as well. And, you know, everyone's just really got enjoy it. Like you said, like mm. my back kills me. Like I cannot, mm. we can, I'm not meant to carry that extra weight it hurts my back mm. i don't like it then it means like i'm not as flexible as i was and stuff like that and that's how i feel about it mm. so then as another um resolution that i've made because i was like aisha i was like you can do it any day of the year but i wasn't doing it any day of the year so i decided to make it <laughs> this day and i decided that new year starts tomorrow anyway um, mm. in the first few days of January don't really count you just you know psyching yourself up but the other thing <laughs> which after I've just done this whole rant about uh, you know I can lose weight the other thing I want to do is uh, be a better Muslim that's that's my other resolution I don't I was really good at the beginning I don't read enough I don't read as much as I should read I think like focusing on that for me this year is going to be a major priority and by the end of this, uh, both me and Mimi will be wearing hijabs. Mm. We won't. But uh, <laughs> I, I don't, no, I don't. I don't, know. I won't be. And at this moment, I don't think I would wear one, but we don't know. But I think in terms of just values and reading and um, yeah, life lessons and stuff like that, I don't think I'm where I should be at this point. And that's quite important to me. Mm. Well, I mean, I mean, I think, I think, like, we can't be hard on ourselves because, like, you know, to quote that tune, I quite like that tune. Well, I can't remember who did it, but like, you know, every day is a winding road and all this and the other. Like, you know, we can all we can always improve, but like at the same time as well. Also, you need to look at how far you've got as it is do you know what I mean and stuff reflect on I reflect on the time thing. like we had Michael um Mumsia, Misa, Dr Michael he was a, he's a sheikh at Cambridge and we had um Yahya Burt on this show last year it was quite interesting this is before I even said Shahada and we were just talking about how long it took for Islam to like it took 23 years for it to be revealed mm. anyway so actually it is a journey and I think I'm yeah. on that I mean you know, I've done things I didn't think I could do. Mm, exactly, exactly. I, think, I mean, and I think yeah. if we all look back in the year and stuff, I mean, you know, you look, you maybe look back to where you were a year ago to where you are now, and then you did the same thing next year. You're probably a lot further than you think. Yeah. I did, uh, giving up things that I love. I miss mm. alcohol more than I miss jerk pork. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna, yeah. I don't eat that anymore. I don't. So mm. yeah, it's it's quite interesting because I didn't actually ever think of myself as a religious person. I don't even know that I am. I just think it's like a life thing. It's a whole life thing. But anyway, mm. anybody anybody else religious here? No, mm. not at all. Louise sort mm. of Aisha. No. no, I'm more I think I'm more spiritual. Yeah. I mean I I mean it's 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 like I don't know, like, some of the, I was having a conversation with this the other day and stuff like that, and I don't, I mean, I was raised a Catholic, and I don't really go to Mass. I mean, you, you know, if I go, it's it's a rarity, but, you know, I will sort of, like, go, because we've got a chapel on campus and stuff like that. I mean, if I need to just go in there just to have a little moment, I will, you know, like, I do, I do pray and stuff like that, but I don't, you know, necessarily feel like I've got to go to church. And, like, you know, my mum was just like, oh, like, you know, 
I th- I th- it was a couple of years ago and I have to say it really irritated me and stuff like that I mean because she's just said oh you should go to church blah 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 and I said that look at the end of the day I mean just because I don't go to church every Sunday that doesn't make me a bad person it's about what I do on a day-to-day basis do you know what I mean because you can get some people that are go and I've seen some of them that will go to church and you know like they'll use it and then they'll come out of church and then do the worst things ever do you know what I mean so I'm not judging people that go to church, but like for me, I don't necessarily see that as as that, a like, yeah as a you know way to be a Catholic. Do you know what I mean? I I just think that it is a more for me, it's about what you're doing every day and and, and stuff and your relationship with God. I think that's your business. You, it's not everybody else's, but frankly, that's what I agree with, and I think that's where I come from. Like, and I'm going to move on from this um, because we've got two um, heathen. No, no, you not Are you not? I'm not. I'm not I, I was raised Catholic as well. I was confirmed. I stopped going to church when I was 19. Um, the only reason I go to church is now for funerals, weddings, and christenings. And, but I'm a good person. And I agree, that's what, I agree with you guys on that. It, it's about what kind of person you are. And that's why I don't agree. Like with the hijab, like I had a couple of Muslim guys go, Where's your hijab? I'm like, Where's yours? Don't ever ask me that again. And one of the most evil people I've ever met in my life wears a hijab. And two of the most gorgeous Muslim women that I've ever met in my entire life who really encompass what Islam is about, don't wear it. So to me, like you said, it's you can do all this dressing up stuff, but we'll have a fuller chat about it another time. Mm-hmm. Aisha, what were you gonna say? She devil child? Oh, I'm a total heathen. <laughs> and my mother's very ashamed of the whole, the whole situation. Um, but uh, the other day I mentioned the pastor at my grandma's funeral to my son and he looked at me blankly, he went pastor and I was like, vicar, reverend, you know, and he continued looking blankly. Oh. I was literally like, there is Lizzie. He has had no contact really at all in his life with anything religious. But um, I definitely agree with the premise about you don't need, I'm not, if you need religion to make you a good person, I'm not really sure that you're a good person at all mm. in the first place. I don't think, I think you can, you know, it's, it's an extra bit of, of your personality, isn't it? You shouldn't need it to make you a good person. The whole idea that it makes people better, be, I mean, you know, I'm not sure about that. I feel like you should be able to be a good person without it. You know? I agree, but so many I have to say, if it was anything, there probably would be Islam over. Christianity, if I was allowed, allowed to say that. It's not, it's not, as soon as not I found Trump, out but... in Islam, you could pe- pray for the destruction of your enemies. I was like, that is my religion. I think I when it. you told me that, that was what swung me too. And therefore, yeah. you know, I had Christianity was always there as an option and I wasn't about it. But you told me that, I was like, oh, <laughs> Islam, you don't have to talk to anyone you don't want to talk to, you don't have to like them, you don't have to do anything. It's very realistic. See, I mean, <laughs> You know what, though, like for me, I don't think I'll, I would ever. I'm, and again, you know, like this is just me, but I think sometimes, you know what, you don't even have to sort of like wish for the de- or pray for it or anything like that, because, you know, like people de- self-destruct. I mean, they do their own. Uh, that, they, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that another day. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. And I mean, you don't have to pray for someone's destruction, but it's fun. But also, like, I don't believe in that karma, self-destruct. I don't believe. I think sometimes you've got to stop people. But that's a conversation. Yeah. You can call them out. Uh, you can call them out. But then I think sometimes it's just like, you know, I think you can only do so much. I, I don't know. Maybe I think that is a very Christian-based, you will get it in the end. You know, karma will get you. You know, I think that's such a Christian-based belief that I don't think is true. I think sometimes... Harmony is a helping hand. But it's an interesting um, belief, isn't it? Because it kind of speaks to class warfare as well. Don't worry, you're at the bottom of the pile for your I, whole life working really hard, but you'll get it in the end. When you, and it speaks to slavery and race. Exactly. How they, there. Mm, don't worry, well, you're a slave now, but don't worry, in heaven, God's going to suddenly be nice to you. Yeah. I mean, I, sorry. I'm the, the anti I'm, irreligious. I'm very, um, <laughs> Cliff, I don't want my honey or whatever heaven or whatever in the sky. I want it now before I die. Thank you. I can't remember the words, the harder they come, but it was something like that. <laughs> so, this year, going on from New Year's, they had the New Year's Honours list, the New Year's Awards, and the Black community um, were represented 
by he's now Sir Trevor Phillips. <laughs> well done, Uncle Trevor. Well Ooh. done. Well done. Well done. Well done for showing young black kids that if you want to be awarded the highest honor by the establishment, all you have to do is to be a sellout and a vile Islamophobe. So well done, Sir Trevor. Thank you for setting such a great example to our kids. How can you go from being an anti-racist campaigner like he was back in the day when he was younger, when he was quite fit actually, um, to just nose diving into what he's gone into now? I don't get it. I don't get it. But I think Nels Abbey made a really good comment. He said, if Trevor Phillips is being honored for his work to race relations, how come no black people are celebrating? Like, none of us are happy. <laughs> Nobody, there's no minority person going, yeah, Trevor, yeah, well done, you did it, well, you know, you're representing, we're all going, this is just awful. But I agree, we won't, so many people have said so much about him, go to a timeline of any black or Asian person, any Mus Muslim person, and uh, you'll see a lot written about him. So Elaine had the great idea that we don't go with the New York, New York, because I see NY, I say New York, the New Year's honor list. We make our own. Who would mm. you, if you could have given a New New Year's honor to a couple of people, maybe two, three people from our community, who would yours be? My first one would be that young boy, Quajo, the guy who does social housing, and we will have him on this show at some point. Um, because to be honest, I didn't realize how bad social housing was in London. I personally think that, 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 that we'll speak about it more when we have him on the show because he's promised to come on. I think they're just trying to get all poor people out of London, like they did with New York and everything like that. So I think Quajo, what he does, when I saw some of those photos, like I didn't follow him for a long time because I'm really scared of mice. And when I was seeing those rodents, I can't even look at them on the screen, but like running through people's houses, raw sewage running through people's houses, yeah. I was like, what is this? So I think what he does is amazing because he does it off his own. He did it because his dad died, didn't he? His dad was Ghanaian. So mm. you two can be proper aunties to him when he comes on. He, mm. um, his dad had to die in conditions like that. His dad had cancer. And so then after that, he decided, but he'll tell his own story to start going around and exposing what is wrong with social housing. And he does it all in his own time and he does it with all his own money. And mm. I just think it's amazing. And he's at uni wow. as well. He's yeah. also at university studying. So I think what he mm. does, and he's really, really raised awareness. I would definitely, definitely give him uh, a uh, Black Woman's Hour New Year honor. Um, so who else? Has anyone got any other suggestions for community people, Elaine? Um, my first one would be given to um, Toya Niketu. Oh! And um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one is um, the fact that he's stood up to the, um, the establishment. Um, he's very honest and firm in his beliefs about like challenging Afrophobia. I've also liked the fact that like when the uh, he was following the Grenfell inquiry and like bringing it to the attention so that people who might not necessarily be seeing it, what was going on in the BBC, were able to see what's being discussed. And also, again, um, a lot from a from perspective, again, of social housing. Um, I think you're very true in his convictions. And he also made a really good film that I like as well called Beauty Is a few years ago, which was about uh, black beauty standards and challenging Western beauty standards. And so that's what I was giving. Oh, how, is that a short or a... It was a documentary. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's funnier than you would think, wouldn't you? Yep. When you actually talked to him, when we had him on the show, he's really funny and really in, like, you know what I mean? Because you, you sort of, even in our own community, when we speak about people who are, I don't know if he identifies as Pan-Africanist or mm -hmm. people who are very much about the culture and about this and that, even in like our own community, we see them as really humorless, don't we? And they're always portrayed as, oh my God, here they go again. Like even, I just remember that character in Boomerang, it's always something you take the piss out of. Like, oh God, it's everything's black, it's black, it's black, it's blackity, blackity, black. And I'd, I'd seen him around over the years and stuff like that. And when he came on, he's just really funny. 
and a lot lighter. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, not physically. Obviously, lighter in you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shut up. Not Aisha lighter. No. <laughs> like lighter. As in, you know. <laughs> Oh God, it's a bad time of year for people of my hue. It is the last, the furthest away from sunshine. Okay, yeah. so we are at our lowest point. Ask Marcus. I saw him talking about it on the TL. It's not our time of year. Trust me. You need to come back to me in August or <laughs> September. I'm living life then. Somebody okay? don't make me the last show. The last show. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> is that what he said? <laughs> It made me I laugh. Him coming to the floor oh. of his yellow brethren. <laughs> I've got another one. Oh, yellow... Marcus asked me. Someone watched it and asked if that that you mind. Oh, sorry, I thought as yellow. No, Marcus, Marcus will do. definitely defend. Definitely, I've Louise. Got... Who? Oh, have you got, got one else? more? I've got one more. Obviously, because of the where I live, I've got to. Even though I am the princess of Brent, I've got to give it to the queen of Brent because. She says what I can't say directly to the man's face, and that is Miss Dawn Butler MP. Of- oh, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Absolutely. 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 We definitely, definitely, we have to try and get Dawn on at some stage as well. Hello, um, Louise, we've spoken to her about coming on here before, haven't we? We've had yeah. to do back and forth. She's so busy. She, she's mm. so busy, but we will get her. Um, Louise, who would you nominate for the Black Women's Hour New Year on the award? Okay, I and this is going to sound biased, but you know it is what it is. I'll give one to Adam, Adam Elliot Cooper, and it's not just he's not my colleague anymore, but he. Well, he's he, you now. Sorry. Oh no, 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 no! That guy, you know, like he's, 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 no, 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 he's doing. He's, he's my doing, inferior. He's doing, he's doing, oh, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. But he's just doing, he's going to places where, you know, like people wouldn't and wouldn't necessarily go, you know, not just in terms of Black Lives Matters, just anywhere, just raising awareness. Because what he's, what he's done, and as well, and even our students have said it, you know, they've given him, they've given, he's given them sort of like aspects into sort of like Black British history. Oh, yes, we've spoken about, but like, you know, because he's gone in and he's researched it, but not just that. He's just such a nice bloke. Do you know what I mean? He's such a nice bloke. Again, low-key funny as well. Very, very low-key, you know, that he would have you in stitches, but he's a nice bloke. Um, I think the other person I would probably give, in fact, I'm going to be very greedy and have two more. Another one I would also give is, is one is for Lady Phil, again, because, yeah. again, she's sort of like speaking about things that, you know, like, again, the Ghanaian community would just rather shove under the carpet. And as a result of that, you know, there's a lot of people that even I know of that cannot come out. Do you know what I mean? But she's just out there saying it as it is. Um, and then the third person I'd give it to is Dame Elizabeth Nyanwu as well, for again, for breaking. She's already got one, but... You know, like for breaking barriers, she came to speak at our uni. Um, I think it was for Black History Month as well. But she's again such a down to earth woman, and she's following me on Twitter. So they're the, they're the three okay. I'd give it to. Well, she deserves one for putting up with your flipping jokes on Twitter. Ouch! <laughs> ouch! 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 I linked her with my sister as well, actually. You know, because they're doing sort of similar things. So, but yeah, I mean, she's she's all those three. Top people. Oh, top since people. we're bigging up Ghanaian brilliance, I forgot one. Um, my other one would be Samantha Asamadu, who started Writers of Colour, who has come back to fight the bill, the, you know, borders bill. Um, she's been back second. She's organising demos. She's writing articles. She's got two great articles, well, a two-part article on Ceasefire, saying, if I die... Um, I want the white left to lower me down into my grave so they can let me down for one last time. She doesn't take any prisoners. She's Mm. just brilliant. Like, she's just, she's very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think. Huh? Frank. Oh, she's very frank and stuff, but I'm I'm talking about the volume of work she does. The speed she does, uh, that's it. She's very prolific and she's just so, so quick in what she does. And also Marcus, who we've mentioned before, who we need to have on. Um, I work with both of them, at Writers of Colour and on my uh, podcast. And I'd love to have them on to this one at some point as well. So uh, Aisha, who are your honours lists? 
Well, one of them is a former guest who I just love, uh, Mark Thompson. I think he should be honoured. Yeah. I don't know if he would um, oh, accept it, but uh, I think he should be honoured. Um, and um, yeah. He will never want you except that. And so he's just so oh. harsh. I think maybe you never know. I don't know why we have to go smashing people's dreams on day <laughs> three of Big Big 2022. Just like that. Just like that. You know, it's the one uh, thing to call me yellow. I can like accept that. that. I've lived with that my whole life. But dream smashing, oh, is just a bit much. <laughs> day three, you know, day three. Anyway, aside from that, Mark, because of his services to the community, yeah. not just as a very, very, very blatant play. Um, and um, also Zara Sultana, I think she's mm -hmm. been doing bits. And she is so young, you know, I, I just really admire that. And she she takes no prisoners. She's young, energetic, competent, and on the right side of history. So probably those two for now. Auntie Diane, but surely has she not been yeah, before? Before, yeah, Auntie Diane as well. I think I see. Yeah, He's I just feel so kind of so my live show, by the way. So if you want to see people, that? Like, I'm saying these are all people I've had on my live show. Yes, RVT. We had Zara last month. We've had Mark on as well, and we've had Auntie Diane. So uh, yeah, so we're going to do definitely going between the two shows. I've got one question for you because obviously the Queen gave somebody a knighthood, and the Queen can bestow these. So it's not your, it's not your. Um, what are we subjects? So as the Queen of the Black Women's Hour, what would be the highest title you'd give to somebody of um, in the keep services to keep the community? Like, I don't get the question. Sorry. I'm well, obviously, there's like limited. You've got like OBs, MBEs, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. the other ones which only the Queen can give, no one's nominated for. So, as oh. the Queen of the Black Women's Hour, who would you give the freedom of the city to? Apart Quajo. from Quajo. Because I'm just so impressed with him. He's my yeah. son's age. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I remember like at the end of the year, and I was like, oh, Jed's day. I was looking at his work and the volume of work he put on. Uh, put, uh, he's putting out there and what he's doing at, at 22, 23. And then I phoned my own son. He was like, I'm wave, I'm wave, oh, what, what? And I was like, are you drunk? It's I'm wave, mum, talk to you another day. And then you see Quajo's timeline and you see my son and you think, <laughs> you know I mean? do you know what I mean? I just, what he does is just, just, not being told to do it by anybody, to be that young and to be that motivated and to have gone through what he went through, watching his dad pass away and then deciding he could have gone out and gone crazy. He could have gone out and gone drinking and gone, you know, done all kinds of stuff, but he didn't. He just put himself into this project and he's really, really becoming recognized. So I think That's also it. because so many young black kids, which is why we did the fundraiser for him, at the end of last year from Black Women's Hour. Like when he got struck down by COVID and stuff, it was like, okay, we're gonna send him an auntie package from Black mm. Women's Hour now. This is, you know, I mean, it was a proper auntie package as well because it had castor oil in it, shea butter for his skin, do rags for his hair. It was like a proper like paracetamol, but you know what I mean? It was just like, I think, yeah, he just doesn't get asked to do it. And I think our kids get so much crap and they achieved yep. so badly. And they're, you know, every time you want to talk about stuff, any sort of newspaper story you see, it's about how disadvantaged our kids are, how they can't do mm. anything, how they, you know, it's always bad news. So I think I'm also a very big believer of giving people their flowers while they're here, yes. uh, which I don't think we do enough, which I think we should actually start doing that. We used I agree. To have, um, on my old podca podcast, Get in the Bin, but I think maybe every week we should celebrate someone from our own community. Weekly flowers, yeah. Yeah, because you don't want them to be, you know, uh, bell hooks. We lost bell hooks, as we know, at the end of last year and stuff. And it was just like all these accolades and, you know, people were praising her and stuff like that. And I just think if we'd said more while she was here, people, well, they can appreciate it. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with that 100%. And I think, you know, the very point that you're saying about, you know, Quejo and the fact that he's so young doing stuff. As you say, there's a lot of black kids, but I think, I, I think you know, like with the younger generation, 
I think across the board, they always tend to sort of like get dissed and seen as a problem and everything. And I believe, you know, like you've got people like Piers Morgan and, 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 you know, lots of other people just basically, you know, like they've got issues with the younger generation. And I, and I don't know whether that's because they feel threatened or it's because they, they, you know, like they're trying to gatekeep so they don't have the same things. I mean, I've said this to, to, to my students as well. I mean, we've had lengthy conversations about things like this. You know, there's even ones that are not, you know, you don't necessarily hear about them or what it is that they're doing, but they're doing some absolutely amazing things. Because, you know, I, I talked to one of them last year. I mean, we for our, for our students, we get them to write, like, you know, an autobiographical piece. And, you know, like, there's so many students who are doing so much, like, you know, great activism or, like, you know, doing things to break boundaries and stuff like that, but you'll never know about them. And some of them don't want to speak out for fear of the bash clash that they're going to get. So I think, yeah, you're right, you should give them flowers. I think where you should, you should be on them. Sorry? Where are you going to, where are you going to, if you're a black kid, where are you going to look to see, you know what I mean? If we, if we as the elder black people, oh, geez, we should just change the name of this podcast to Auntie. Auntie Podcast. Auntie, Auntie Lowers. <laughs> no, she's in denial. But I mean, like, if if we if we're not doing it, if we're not bigging up our kids, who's going to do it? Nobody's no, no. really doing it. You know, it's just bad press all the time. So I, I think I, I, that's I, also why Adam Elliot Cooper's amazing, because Adam was talking about uni students and stuff, and all these black kids didn't matter what course they were on why he would leave his office door open because they would just see him and there's a black, you know, and, and you as well being in higher education, they would just sort of peek around and we all got a black teacher that we remember that we, you know, who you just sort of gravitated towards because you wanted that kind of encouragement. And I think we should do that a lot more on this yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's that thing of each one teach one because, yes. Um, like it, it's it's because I mean I think with with you know in terms of going into academia some people don't want to do it because they don't they think that okay there aren't many of us there and to be fair that's true I mean at the moment you just look at how many black professors by the way you know there's only 35 I am going in my lifetime I'm going to be one of them but like you know there's not that many black female professors there's what 35 at the last count so you know like when you're not seeing that many but then you know you're at a university I think our university I have to say we're sort of changing in that because you know my boss is one she, she's one of them but it's changing in that respect but you know like you you have diverse universities where you're not seeing that many like you know members of staff who are black and all this that, and the other it makes people lose hope do you know what I mean but like you know just and I'm gonna say this having having people around it kind of helps in terms of retention it helps in turn, in lots of other ways do you know what I mean so I just I just think it's no, no not just in academia I think in any field where you see other people like yourself it will really kind of it can sort of like change the thing but then also it's about us pulling people up as well it's not because some people do like to shut the door and that oh I, I can't even I, I can't even tell you how angry that makes me but some people will try to shut the door and it's all about their own careers and stuff like that and that absolutely that stinks frankly but yeah. you know yeah it's about pulling people up yeah. a lot of different industries for sure um yeah. so anybody else want to honor anyone i think we gave, it, we gave you the last one to give the queen okay all right then um we will talk a bit about so we're talking about what we're going to do, um, you know, our work in the community and stuff like that um, in 2022. Um, we were talking about the book, it's the new Beacon Bookshop, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we're talking about, um, this is prior to recording, about the fact they just had to do another fundraiser. And they did one in 2020 as well to keep going. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I remember that bookshop from when I was younger. I used to, um, when I used to visit my mother in Holloway Road, I used to go down to that bookshop a lot and get some stuff. I always thought it was really great, really friendly. Mm -hmm. um, but more than that, I mean, it's the second fundraiser they've had to do in the last couple of years. So what we really wanted to speak about, I think they've, they've reached their target, like 35 mm -hmm. grand in a day and they stretched it to 50 grand and they're going to be doing some bursaries and stuff like that for young writers and writers in residence and stuff like that. So they might even move to different premises, but 
one of the questions we were asking is business models are changing you know things are moving online a lot so when it comes to supporting black businesses what does that look like a with so much change you know to the way that people buy things and b also we're in a pandemic for the third year going i mean when it comes to black businesses how strict are you guys about buying from them elaine what about you um it depends, it depends. so i when it comes to certain foods it will be from black shops i don't really well I was going to say I don't really buy clothes, but I think you'll see on this thing, most of the clothes I wear now is athleisure. And so that's that's either... Ivy Park. No, oh, I was going to say, one of the two brothers, either Adidas or Puma, Ivy Park comes underneath Adidas, and then there's Puma, and, that's, and trainers are sort of whatever. But I do try to support Black businesses. I read, like, pretty much most of the books that I read are by Black authors. Um, I... But I know I could do better. Um, I know, like, even with me, with my consumption of books, uh, I should really try to buy, well, actually, um, buy my books more from black bookshops, but they, sometimes it's, they're just not there. And I consume so many, um, like last year I read 58, which isn't much compared to others I've heard other people say, but it's, Wherever I go, I will. If I'm walking past a bookshop, I'll go and I'll buy it. And like the owner is potentially secondary, and um, I probably shouldn't give um, Bezos as much money as I do, uh, Mr. Bezos, because he doesn't need it. But he doesn't do any good with it. Have you seen what he was wearing on New Year's Eve? Oh my gosh, he's just. Oh my gosh. He's, 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 like, he's living for the gram now that he's a singleton. So I just, um, I know I could do better, and there is always more. And I'll always try to promote black business as well. I think I'm the same. I think I could do better. Obviously, there's certain things you do go to black people for, like your hair or, mm -hmm. you know, certain foods and stuff like that. You will. But I mean, even in terms of around where I live, I will go to the African Caribbean shop, which is owned by Nigerian people, to get stuff like planting, even though I could get it somewhere else in town mm. or I could get goat meat somewhere else in town. I will go, I will go to mm. that one um, or the halal butchers. Like they're both halal anyway. So I will go to those ones, but I think I could do better. And I think I give way too much money to Amazon. I think it's just so easy to do, isn't it? It's just a click, it's on the app. It's there the next day. And I, I think with everything that I've heard and that is another resolution that I have which ties into other things that I would just spoke about. It's about, because if you're looking after yourself and your health, and I obviously I want to be a better Muslim and everything, it's all tied into ethics, isn't it? Mm. And behavior. And I think I really do need to stop with Amazon. I really do. Um, or do a lot, a lot less of, of it. Sometimes you can't help it. You need something really, really quickly. But I think, yeah, I want to be the same as, as uh, Elaine and do better. What, so, and I mean, that even translates to online. I think what the problem that some people have is, and I've had it in the past, is sometimes you want a scented candle, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you can go on Amazon and buy a scented candle and you could get three or you could get some off or you could get them and you could have it there the next mm -hmm. day. Or you could go to a black owned scented candle where it's all done by hand and it's all amazing and it's brilliant, but I can't afford it <laughs> all the time. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I've seen some really mm. good natural hair care stuff that I would love. And then when I think, oh, I need a leave-in conditioner and I needed this and I needed that. And then you look online and you're like, I can't be paying 90 pound for those three things. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it happened I'm to me the other day. I bought some um, leave-in like hair butter and it was about 30 quid. Um, and it will last me a long time. And it's obviously all natural ingredients. And it's really great. And it goes really far, which is difficult with my hair. That's not often the case. But... If I wanted to buy three products, that was going to be, I mean, you know, a lot of hours work on my part to do it. And so obviously then you have to kind of balance it out with three pound stuff can do from, you know, yeah. from Superdrug or whatever, because you can't just have, you can't exclusively, I can't certainly afford to. And then you add on delivery to those things. So you're spending 30 pounds plus five or six pounds 
and it still takes three to five working days. Right. Yeah. When I'm not organized enough. So when I've run out of leave in conditioner, I've already put water in the bottle and shaken the bottle and cut the bottle and <laughs> cut the bottle and I've got my finger in there. And then at that point is when I'm like, oh, I'm gonna order some more, which means I need it within the next 24 hours. There is. you're so Jamaican. Thank you for not letting you throw away. They're like, this isn't finished. It's like, what like, more do you want of me? you. Huh? Like in my head, I can see so many, you know, the hand cream yeah. tubes. You cut them and put the thing on the thing. And you're like, why is that tube so small? Oh, yes, my mum couldn't throw it away. She taught me well. Thank you, mum. Listen, Jamaican people take that. They'll be like, you're not throwing that away. I, do, I love the alkaline video where he was talking about granny cutting the toothpaste tube. <laughs> so you will um, be, said, when I've not gone that far. I think England's obviously taken its toll on us. <laughs> Um, Louise, how are you when it comes to black businesses and buying stuff? I mean, I, I agree, I could do better, but I mean, when it comes to sort of, okay, so I've got a thing for rings, as you could probably see, right? Ooh. And you know, like, I, yeah. Are they knuckle dusters? Is that a knuckle duster? I love that. Yeah, no, not, not really, really cool. not really. Not really. Is this solid? Um, well, no, this one isn't. This one, hmm. no, this one's just metal, and then this one is this one is silver. This one is silver. Cool. So That's good. I have a supplier in the market. Okay, she she's you know like she's a black woman. She's and she actually looks like Skunk and Nancy. So anytime I go in the market, I always like go there. Oh, I'm just going to have a look, and then like you know I've spent twenty pounds. But she does do me, you know, she does do me some you know, discounts and stuff like that. So for example, I think before Christmas, two weeks ago, I went in there and stuff and I got, she gave me four rings for a tenner. And so, so like, you know, I always, always go to her. And then there's also a, an auntie in the market as well, who, you know, she's, if I need like a garner cloth or whatever, she, she's not from far from where my dad comes from and stuff. So like she, you know, I always go to her. And if I can see, for example, like, you know, there are black sellers online, I'll try to go to them, but I think I'm with you. I could do better. Like, you know, Jeff, Jeff Bezos does get more of my money than I would like. Um, and so does eBay. But then even on eBay, I just try to sort of like, you know, see where there's black sellers. Because that dress that I wore to my keynote street, street speech, again, I got that off of a black, speller, a black seller. But I think I could do, I, I could do a lot better. In terms of, you know, you made the point earlier on about, um, you know, it costing so much money. I just wonder whether it's this, because I think, you know, maybe in some cases people charge a lot of money because in order to break even. Oh, absolutely. I'm not saying, oh know. gosh, I didn't want to create the impression I'm saying. There's oh, no, 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 no. It's like they're no. doing stuff by hand a lot of the time. Like, yeah. Yeah. When you get those black natural hair products that are made from black sellers, I mean, they have put love and care into exactly. every single part of that. And I understand exactly. why it's more. It just, I just have to earn more. That's what yeah, I do. Exactly. I it. And it's also, exactly. the other thing as well is that when you're looking from um, the, the supply chain perspective as well, even like when it goes, when it comes to things like, obviously, if I'm going to go and buy something like Kenke or um, Garu or something like that. You can, I think you might be able to get Garu in Sainsbury's from Chocolate or some, I'm not going to. Yeah. But then if you're going to a shop that sells food that's got African or Caribbean, what, how that food may have actually got here, if it's like from, from the source, it might have been that it's come in, when they're taking into account the, the airfare and all of these things, shea butter, shea butter in Ghana, like you, I've, got, I've got gallons of the stuff in my house, but here, is expensive because of the fact it's like you haven't got the massive distribution chains and you haven't got the um, wholesalers and the cash and carries and all of those things. We don't have like a we don't have a, a proper distribution chain from top to bottom in the UK, even though we've been here for a while. And that's mm. and that's um, that's a problem. But I'm thinking about the things that I do buy black. Obviously, my nail lady's black. So, See, he's, I, I only ever had one black nail lady, and she wasn't there for very long. Oh no, my nail lady's black. I will, I will sing her praises. I mean, my nails are on point all the time. They are. They really are. We, we don't have that option. Also, it's options as well. Because yeah. I'm not in London, even though we do have a lot of black stuff in the African community here and a Caribbean community here. We don't have black nail lady. We just don't have them. 
So yeah, that would be, that would be, it's also access, but maybe we could do a bit more like on Twitter and IG and stuff and, and boost some black businesses. Um, that could be a way that we, we deal with it. Cause I really do want to do better by that. And yeah. also, you know, Mm, absolutely i i agree i agree i mean uh, you know like the thing is sometimes as well it's worse it's, it's word of mouth because one of my friends she used to own a like a mass she used to do not a massage parlor but she used to do massages like you know those um like you know spiritual you know she, she, just she, terrible sorry carry yeah, on yeah but she used to she used to do i mean she's moved now and stuff like that but i mean i always used to sort of not just because she was my friend but also to try and get her some business. So I think sometimes it's word of mouth and it did work, you know what I mean? So I think you just have to do what you can do, what, what we can all do really to, to get it out, get the word out there. So I'm such a child and this is not part of being a better Muslim. I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I, has anyone got anything we, we have to, we've run out of time. Gosh. We have, we've done like, yeah, we have, we've yeah. run out of time. Um, Elaine's face, she looks so shocked. <laughs> it went really quickly. Um, has anyone got anything we want to close on? I think the subjects that we've spoken about, we can speak about the, we had a couple of other things about that report that came out about more black kids being in poverty, but we can speak about that next week. Yes. Hmm. I imagine yeah. it'll come up somehow over the year with the topic. Well, definitely, to especially when we speak about social help social housing and stuff it. like that. It's, yeah, it's, and when we have black and brown MPs on as well, that kind of stuff, when it comes to policy and how yeah. policy affects us and our communities, that's got to come yeah. up, right? Exactly. And it was a Labour report and all the MPs we're talking about having on thus far are Labour MPs, yeah. right? Oh, we forgot mm. on a tender side, but we're... Oh, uh, yes! Definitely. That's why I was linking, trying to keep saying that you was going to thingy, you know, the Queen to give to the King. Oh, yes, Tandis, I, we, yeah, we'll stick it on at the end. So, uh, what are you guys doing for your last day of holiday? I'm, I'm back to work next week, Monday. Oh, wow, okay, look at her grooming. Yeah. Oh, God, I mean, all of these tenders will be watched, all of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just about to take my son ice skating and then with my mum, which is a bit of a tradition of ours. Ah, uh, yeah, Auntie Claire. Tell her I've been yeah. going through it, but I'll call her. Yeah, do call her. Do you know, reach out. You know, she's always around. Yeah. Um, but and you know, she loves you. But also, um, she's like a cat with three tails because obviously she has a third grandson now. So yeah, um, she has Rohan, Jayan, and Koa, who is six weeks old. So um, we're all very girl. Happy. She needs a granddaughter. We can't. We're clearly incapable of that. So you know. <laughs> 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 We, we, it's not that we don't love the boys, we do love the boys, but it was like a tribe of ruffians at my dad's for Christmas. Oh my God, it's wild. But yeah, I'm doing that, and then we're going to go and have some food. So that's quite a cosy afternoon. Very nice. And Louise, okay. you'll, you'll, uh, you start your new role tomorrow. It's so the best of luck. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It. It'll be amazing, as always. Well, I, so. I really oh, hope so. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. But yeah, I mean, today I am going to walk my 2.3 miles. Just, I mean, sorry, Is my 3.3 miles. in London, guys? No, it's not anywhere I am. No, it's, it's raining really rain. heavily where I am. It's just started. I'm really I hope not. Ice skating is okay. going to be a riot. <laughs> Is it that <laughs> Is yours out yeah, there? It's a the pavilion. It's one of the, it's like Somerset Houses um, ice rink. It's based virtually. Oh. You know, they had to close one of the ice rinks somewhere because, like, it was starting to melt because it was so warm. Mm. Yeah, doesn't that, surprise me. It's 17 was. degrees. Anyway, say goodbye to the audience. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Bye, back. audience. Uh, yeah, we will see Bye. you next time. You. Thank you for joining us on Black Woman's Hour. Now, I, I'm aware that I make mistakes. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Uh, I don't know how to do this. You've okay, done I'm it before. Recording. Yeah, but remember last time I cut everybody off. Bye, audience, by the way. Bye, bye, bye. See, this is where uh, the auntie thing kicks in. <laughs> bye. <laughs>